I want to welcome you to today's family devotion. God bless you as you listen. Please stay with us always. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Remember to press the notification button. Press the like button or pass your comments or do both. And then above all, share these messages. It is the word of God that does do the work together so that we can win more souls for Christ. God bless you as you cooperate with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for another beautiful day, a new page that you have given to us willingly. Thank you, Lord, for your love that is fresh, your mercies that endure forever. Thank you, Lord, for protection, for safety, for security. Thank you for the peace that reigns even overnight as we wake up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the joy of coming to you to hear your word, to share your word, and to be guided by your word. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our iniquities. Thank you for supplies, for provisions, for protection. Lord, we appreciate you because forever you are there for us. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O Lord, for your unfailing love. We really appreciate you. Uh, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. O oh Lord God of heaven and earth, as we have come to you today, Lord, whatever sins are in our lives, please forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, today, come and speak with us. Holy Spirit, come down. Teach us yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever we shall hear today, please let us Profit us unto righteousness and unto salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray that if everyone is in bondage as this word will be going, please release them in the mighty name of Jesus. Set the captives free. At the end of our reign in this world, please let us reign with you in your heavenly places in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's just take one or two brief uh, praise worship. This morning. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The Lord always praising the Lord always praising the Lord with all our Praising the Lord with all our always. Alleluia, our Lord is good. Alleluia, our Lord is good. Alleluia, our Lord is good. He is good to us. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is good. Alleluia, our Lord is good. Alleluia. Good is good to us. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Amen. Because of our recording time, please let's go ahead. And uh, we are taking our Bible passage from the book of Matthew, chapter 14. And we're taking it from verse 22 to chapter 15. Verse 9, we may stop at a comfortable place because of the recording time that we are trying to keep as short as possible. Please be attentive. God bless you. Amen. 
Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, sought by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to, to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is high, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Penasera. And when the men of the place recognized him, he sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begging that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfect well. Then the scribes and Pharisees, who were from Jerusalem, came to Jesus, saying, Why did your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they did not wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who calls his father or, or mother, let him be put to death. But he said, Whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me, is a gift to God. Then he, he need not honor his father or mother, but you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrite. Well, well, did Isaiah prophesy about to you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching and doctrine the commandment of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We really thank God for that passage. And I'm so happy that all these messages are coming directly from Jesus Christ himself, not any other apostle. And uh, whatever Christ says, honestly speaking, it is final. So the topic we are going to examine this morning will have to do with during your storm, embrace faith, not fear. Embrace faith, not fear. And the second one that is like it, which was the thing together, though there are two separate messages, is law and grace. The law and the grace. In case, uh, because of our time, I might have to break it into two. Maybe I'll take the law and the grace uh, as a part two or something, or as a separate topic. But if I can do justice to both, I will uh, do so. Now, the passage that was read to us has two things, you know, two special messages. One, it has to do with when you are in crisis, you know, you should have faith in God and not fear and not doubt. Believe that the storm shall be over. The second one is 
that is there. Um, when uh, the, the, the really, how do I put it this way? When you are talking about Christianity, Christianity is not about laws, and the Bible has made it clear in Hebrews 7 that Christianity, the period of the law has come. The period of the grace avails us so much opportunity to do what we shouldn't have done, you know, during the law period, to do it now because the grace is there for us. Let me give you an example of that one before we go ahead. For instance, during the uh, law period, we are supposed uh, we are supposed to wash our hands and all that before we eat. Observe so many uh, traditions, but during the grace period, um, again during the law period, for instance, on Sundays we are not supposed to do anything other than you know just stay indoor rest and pray. But during this uh, dispensation, after you must have done, I mean, worshipped your God on Sunday, and then you arrest him. If there is any necessity to do certain things, maybe your work requires that you come to work, to work on Sunday. Maybe uh, Something happens that must take you out to go and rescue somebody. Jesus demonstrated that one because he asked them when he healed somebody on Sunday and they said, you know, why should you heal on Sunday? You should have waited till Monday. And Christ told them, Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. So the grace period, you know, actually avails us more opportunity not to do evil in the name of religion, in the name of observing religious doctrines, in the name of observing the laws. Also in the Old Testament, of course, there is the tit for tat thing, you know, tit for tat. The, let me call, if we are, let me call, say that the nature of our church, let's say we have church there, Unlike what we have now, the nature of our church then was applying the law to do tit for tat, an eye for an eye, and then you kill your enemy, you stole your enemy to death, or you stole anybody who, is, who has committed any form of sin that is considered grievous, you stole them to death. But during the new dispensation, you don't do that anymore. Instead of Praying against your enemy, for instance. You pray for your enemy now. Christ made that clear. You can see we are doing what you will consider the opposite of what, you know, was obtainable during the law time. That's why the Bible even says the law kills. I mean, the letter kills. That's the law. Kills. But the grace gives life. Holy Spirit gives life. Praise the Lord. So haven't cleared the ground. Let's take the first one first. Um, while we look at what happened here, let me just give an example. Uh, what was it for yesterday? What was it? Day 22, was it? Amen. Today is 22. Amen. To God be the glory. I didn't want to attach dates to this thing so that people can access them at any time when they're thinking it expires. The word of God never expires. Okay. Three days ago was the day that in, in the year that we are in, don't let me mention the year so that, uh, like I said, I don't want to be date specific. Now, is a year that, is a day that I will not forget, or I will never forget, in the sense that that day was a stormy day for me, a stormy day for me, from all from right, left, and center, every, all around me. I was filled with 
storms. Storms that are of high dimension. Because wherever I turned, I saw storms. You know, issues arose from practically all the areas I'm connected with in my family, both sides, all at the same time. And my partner, maternal family, challenges upon challenges, all of them stormy. And then even in my own territory, I mean, nuclear family, ah, another challenge. I was wondering, Lord, what is happening? Or just like how the reports were coming during Job's time, but I give glory to God that God intervened. But one thing that, do you know, will you understand one thing? Stormy as it was, challenging as everything was, you know, seemingly upsetting, let me put that with God, it really never upset me. Amen. It never upset me. But seemingly so upsetting, the Lord kept me in peace in the middle of the storms. And all what my reaction to them was, was that I should never worry. Why? And I said I was in peace in the storm, in the, inside the storms. I, I never got worried because I knew I had a God that I served, a God that never fails. He has never failed me. He was not failing me. He has never failed me. And this time around, he cannot fail me. And he will never fail me. A very faithful, a very merciful, a very favorable, a very loving God that, you know, doesn't look at who I am, what I did, but just loves me, especially. I told you Moses had his own name apple of God's eyes. Abraham has his own name, unique name, uh, father of faith. God gave me a unique name. God called me my favored child, favored child. So that favor of the Lord goes with me wherever I go. And I really thank him for this. Now, Three days after, even that very day, two out of the three major challenges that came upon us, the storms, got completely over because God intervened and we had, you know, a lasting solution to what had been troubling us. Amen. My family members will understand that. In fact, that day I pity myself. I was just wondering what it is. But God took control. So I give him glory. Now, I want to use it to also encourage us. Like the Bible passage that we read. The book of Matthew chapter 14 from verse 22 to chapter 15 from uh, verse 9 that we are taking together. This one talks about Christ coming in at a quiet time. I think it's in the middle of night now, if I get it right. Or, but what thing that, were, that happened was that Peter and others were there and they saw Christ coming even in the water. I think so, on the water, isn't it? Yes. They saw Christ coming. They were in the boat. And um, when they saw Christ coming, they were panicking because that was an odd hour. And in the first place, if they had been expecting him, they wouldn't have uh, panicked. But lo and behold, they were not expecting him. But even now when he, he was coming, he did something that was unusual, that is miraculous. Because if he will come, I think the logical expectation is that he would have given word for the um, for the people to bring the boat to the edge of the water so that he can enter. But now, 
The boat was in the middle of water, of the water, and here is Christ coming, walking on the water, and that astonished them. It frightened them, you know, and they had to cry. Peter had to cry. Out, ah, what's happening? Are we seeing a ghost? Then Christ calmed the storm or their fear by saying, "Fear not, I am the one." And then Peter replied, if you are the one, then ask me to come and meet you, even on the water. And Christ said, come. Peter arose and started walking on the water. And when he was doing that, then he saw a big storm coming. I don't know what storm is coming your way. Just like the ones that came my way. Three days ago, they shall be calmed in the mighty name of Jesus. So I didn't, uh, then, then Peter was on the when he saw the storms and uh, wild wind and all that, he, he feared. And immediately he doubted the faith with which he was walking on that water. He started sinking. But thank God, the Lord rescued him. I don't know. What is it that is melting your heart? The troubles of life that are melting your heart. I say today, just as Christ said then, peace be still in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May the, may the storms of, life, of your life calm down in the mighty name of Jesus. But for it to calm down, you need to have faith in the first place that Christ will rescue you no matter how terrible the situation may be, the first thing you have you need is faith. If you remember the first storm when Christ was in the boat with his um, disciples, I think that was in chapter 13, if I'm correct. And he said, I mean, they were, they were on the boat and the storm again came. They panicked. The people panicked. They said, we perish. Oh, unless you save us, that Christ said, you people of little faith. That was, what, that was his response. So you need faith to be able to survive storms. And interestingly, you cannot avoid storms. To God be the glory for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Two powerful messages that, I mean, two exclusive or specific messages or that are uh, unique messages that God had, you know, preached through us this year. One is that the, no matter how faithful or prayerful you think you are, you will face challenges, and challenges are storms. And then we told you that you have to remain committed to God, faithful to God, for you to be able to be in peace even inside that storm. Then the second one was the one where we titled Pray Against Losses. Please, I, I advise you, please go to this message. They are not long ago, just about two, two weeks ago. I don't think there's anyone that is more than three weeks now. Praise the Lord. Please go and listen to them. Because God gave us a revelation that has to do with serious storms. And I want to tell you, one of the storms was the one that came three days ago. The beauty of a Christian's life is that there is nothing that is coming that God knows can make you panic or can, can make you to begin to ask questions, why me or where did this come or whatever, that God would not have revealed to you one way or the other. So, so that when the storm comes, you will recognize it. Instead of panicking,